Honourable Skane. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Honourable Robert Sims for his comments. I just want to express, I guess, that I'm a little bit confused um, that he's read out a whole list of entitlements that he really supports uh, for vulnerable people uh, in these situations. And uh, while I respect that, I find it very confusing that he's adamant that he's not going to support uh, B if the department is aware that a vulnerable person may need assistance, that all reasonably practicable steps should be taken to ensure that the person's next of kin or nominated person is informed. Uh, that seems to uh, sort of contradict his uh, stance and views that he uh, advocates uh, for people in those situations. And he's also not going to support Part C if the department is aware that a person who's having their liberty uh, restricted may require mental health services, that we should actually consider whether they should be dealt with under the Mental Health Act 2009 or whether counselling should be provided to that person. It makes absolutely no sense to me. I also just want to make clear that I think we're hiding a lot behind this word problematic, and I do have a question for the attorney uh, with regards to that. I'd just like to understand in which way it is problematic that if the department is aware that there is a vulnerable person, all reasonably practicable steps are taken to notify a next of kin, and in which way is it problematic that if the department is aware that someone may be vulnerable and need uh, assistance uh, or counselling provided or consideration under the Mental Health Act, why, why uh, the attorney feels that's not achievable? Well, the Honourable Chair Fani, can we hear the answer to that question before I come to you. Uh, attorney, do you want to answer that question now? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, sir, and I uh, thank the Honourable uh, Ms. Game for her contribution. Um, as, as